The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network, found exclusively at wrestlingwithjonas.com. Very fortunate to, be to have Gabby Ortiz on. Thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate your time. I've been trying to work this out since maybe February, March time, but it's got to that we're finally able to work something out. Yeah, I'm very happy we were able to work it out. Yeah, you're a very busy person and hard to get hold of. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just like there's always so much. I, I, I've i always been against the idea of getting like someone to help me out with stuff because I'm like, oh, I can do it. I can take care of it. I can, And like, I think I'm getting to the point where I might need like some assistance with booking and scheduling stuff because I it gets out of hand sometimes. Yeah, you don't really check your emails as much, do you? <laughs> You know, since I since I left my my office job, not so much anymore because there's just like the, I get I get messages like all over social media <clears throat> and like my OnlyFans and it's like my emails. So much of it is just like advertisements and things like that. Yeah. And um, the, the occasional like business email does come in, but like most of my business is done on like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean. You mentioned Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and all those other stuff. I mean, you mo- I see you mostly active on X. That's what you're most yeah. active on. Yeah, I keep forgetting that's the name of it now. Um, yeah, it, I don't get why I changed it. Yeah, I don't. Either. That's always been my. It's. I know it's crazy to say, but it's always been like one of my favorite social medias. I've had it since like 2008. The same 2008. account. Yeah, the same account since 2008. I got it because Pete Wentz from Fallout Boy um, posted on his live journal or his Tumblr. Actually, I think it was his live journal. Like, oh, I, I just made an account on this on this um, social media Twitter. Uh, follow me on there. And then I was like, I have to. So he was like the first person I followed. And he's the reason I have a Twitter. But like, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, 2008. It's been a long time. Yeah, you've also been a regular for AEW the odd few years, haven't you? Yeah, it's semi regular, I'd say. Yeah, and you, I think you kind of know where I'm going with that, don't you? No, I can't. I can't possibly imagine what you <laughs> what you're what you're gonna go with. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of attention from that. I did. Um, How? What did you? Would you say you got more opportunities from that? Or a match with Thunder Rosa and other little stuff like that? How did it come about? Um. So I. I have uh, people in AEW or that were in AEW that uh, I have known basically my entire career. And um, I was able to contact this is this is maybe my third or fourth time at AEW when that picture happened. Um, but I talked to their their talent relations person and they bought me in. And I mean, they kept bringing me in. And uh, <laughs> so that was like the first match that I had there that was uh, broadcasted and that picture was taken and then it kind of exploded. It's, it's, it really did sort of change my, my life. Um, because I, I was initially very kind of embarrassed by it. I was like, Oh no, this is like, this kind of sucks. Like, I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. And then, um, I ended up realizing people kind of loved it when they found out who I was and they started following me and I, um, made, there's like a sun glare. I'm so sorry. Um, I, and I, was able to get a bigger following and then translate that to um, OnlyFans, which then became my primary source of income. So it's like sort of a, sort of serendipitous that it happened. I'm very, I'm very happy that it um, became a positive thing and not and not kind of like a weird, vulgar, embarrassing moment for me. Yeah, it just it just became something really cool. <laughs> Especially with the person you was in the ring with, Thunder Rosa, that's okay. really amazing as well. Yeah, I love her. She's um she's a huge inspiration for me. There's there's things that I do, um, with my looks and stuff that are inspired by things that she does because I feel like because of that moment, we're like in like eternally just combined with each other forever. Like even though we I haven't seen her in a long time, um. So I just I just really look up to her. I look up to her. I think she's fantastic. I think I just I really really yeah. enjoy. I really really enjoy her as a, just a person, but as a wrestler, she's incredible. Yeah, 
one of the my favorites from AEW. You also met. You mentioned obviously your OnlyFans. What's how long have you been doing that? Um, I did. I started in July of 2022. Um, mm-hmm. so it'll be two, oh my god, it'll be two years in July. That's crazy. What's the most weirdest message you've had like on that? Because you must get. Weird. Oh my god. Honestly, it's not even like it's. I'm not gonna say the exact things because it's a personal thing to this specific oh, okay. individual. But like, um, just really intimate stuff about their personal lives. Like, I, I sort of um become a therapist on there sometimes, just like sure. talking people through issues in their lives. And like, I never anticipated it being something like that. Um, and I'm not gonna get too vulgar because I don't want to. I don't want to say anything like, but yeah, guys ask for weird things, like just strange things. I just don't, I don't want any one of them to like watch this and be like, oh, she's talking about me. Like, I know, I don't. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> but you must get all the time the odd random message that's just, you think. Yeah. You are also a lot of, you love your, because you're from Philadelphia, aren't you? Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. And you also, do we'll go to Philadelphia Phillies? How do I say it? Is it Phillies? A lot. Phillies, yeah. Yeah. You go there a hell of a lot. A lot, yeah. A yeah. Big I'm going, fun. I'm going there probably next <laughs> the next time they're in Philly because they're they're here today, but then I think they're traveling. Mm. Um but I'm definitely gonna go back. I have to my my goal for this season is to hit a game every month of the yeah. season. So I have my I have my June month, my June date. I already got my tickets. May, I was supposed to go on the 6th, but I wasn't feeling too well, so I, I didn't go. And uh, so I have, to, I have to hit my May quota. It's very important. Yeah, I know. I, every time you post on Twitter, you're always wearing the cap, the jersey, everything. It's like, you love it. I do. It's my favorite sport, my favorite team. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. They're great. They're, they're a great group, group of dudes, it looks like. So I'd love to meet all of them one day. Yeah, you also went to Raw after WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's how was that? It was so cool. It was cool to be a fan. Um, I, I never get to be a fan anymore. So when I went, I was just like, I'm gonna mark out. I'm gonna just really enjoy myself. I'm not gonna try to like be too cool for you know, because there's there's sort of a thing with within wrestling where it's like, oh, don't don't be excited about it. You know, mm. just like be professional, but like I wasn't going to do that. I just wanted to have fun. So I really yeah. did just enjoy it. And seeing The Rock was super cool because I've never seen him live. And uh, CM Punk did a speech after the taping was done. And that was really, really cool to see because I know he has some ties to Philly and it was cool to hear him talk about it. What was it like? Did you get any people that recognized you and wanted photos and stuff like that? Um, There was one person. I don't know when my makeup happened. I don't know what that is. Sorry. Don't there was one person who I heard go like, that's Gabby Ortiz, but they didn't stop me. And I yeah. mostly just stayed at my seat the whole time. I didn't really like. Yeah. Your dad went to get everything. <laughs> Luckily, we, we were in a, we were in a, like a suite kind of thing. So you can like, yeah. order your food to your seat. So I didn't have to go anywhere. It was awesome. It looked like you had good seats from what I saw. Yeah. Yeah. They're awesome. They're awesome seats. You've also been in the <clears throat> wrestling business for eight years. I think from 2016. Yeah. That's a long time. I can't believe oh, it. It's crazy if you think about it. Yeah. Years. Yeah. Nearly a decade. <laughs> what was it? What made you become a professional wrestler and how did it come about? Your training was stuff about. Um, I was kind of in a, a place in my life where I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't. I, I was. I was. I had my job at City Hall, which was which was great because I was 20 years old, didn't go to college, you know, and I got this really prestigious job with the city. I was literally the executive assistant to the mayor. That was my first big girl job. But I at my heart, I'm I'm a creative. I love to perform. I love to act. I love to sing. I love to play music. I love to I, I'm not a good dancer, but I love to dance like um, and I was feeling just very. I was missing that aspect of my life because I just became a government gal. Like I wasn't doing anything, mm-hmm. just answering phones. And, you know, 
Um, and I was also, I was just a big fan of wrestling at the time. I started rewatching wrestling when I was maybe like 17 years old. <clears throat> and um, I was wonder I wondered, I was sitting there, I was like, how do people become professional wrestlers? Because it's not like college football. It's not like basketball where you get recruited out of, you know, out of your school that you go to. It's like, how do you do it? Like, what is, what's, what, what goes into it? So I looked at, I literally looked it up. And uh, a couple schools came up, one being the Monster Factory, and I liked their website, and I liked that they had videos of, like, what the tr- what the tryout looks like for them. I was just like, cool, I'll go there, and I'll try out, and see see how it goes. And it went very well, and I'm still, you know, I'm still a Monster Factory kid. I still train there occasionally, and yeah, I love it. So that's it. I was just bored. I want something cool to do. And I saw that you mentioned on your TikTok back in early January that you, correct me if I'm wrong, that you mentioned about resting, that you don't know how long you want to be doing it. You want to be resting. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so I think people might have, like, misunderstood. Yeah, I think people might have misunderstood what I was saying when I when I posted that. It was basically me just being like, I could be, I could you know, retire tomorrow or I could retire in 25, 30 years. Like, I just, I don't know. Yeah what the next what the next couple years is going to look like i don't i never i'm not one to make a five-year plan you know i kind of just go for things and do the things that i want to do and it could be maybe next year or in a couple months i'm like i don't want to do this anymore but i don't think that's gonna i really don't think that's gonna be the case i think i'm gonna be sticking around for a while um and i people got kind of like concerned with that video but it was mostly me just saying like i'm just i just want to have fun you know if I'm going to do this, I'm going to enjoy it and for as long as I want to enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I see I see where you're coming from with how miss, people can misread that. And it's, it's anything with being on the internet, people can misread stuff or like take things to heart or take things out, out of consideration. But you explained and obviously I get what you, what you mean. It's your choice if you want to retire, like you said, tomorrow, next year, 25 years. Yeah. So it's your choice. Also, TikTok, you are active on there quite a lot as well. And some of the stuff you put up is quite funny. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just name one thing that recently had the For You page. <laughs> there is a lot of stuff that comes up. Dude, it's weird. <laughs> it's crazy. It's so weird. I accidentally clicked on it when I was like looking, I was reading a caption and I went to swipe up and it clicked on the for you page. And the first thing I see is like what looks like a guy's thingy. And I was like, what is this? So I scrolled and I was it was just the weirdest stuff I've ever seen. I'm like, how is this allowed? It was so I had to tell people, I was like, look at this. Like if it's different than mine, let me know because like something's wrong with me. No, <laughs> I, I, I did it as well, and it was it wasn't that same as what you've just said but it was men like i'm just saying for example i don't know in somewhere in asia like messing with dogs or just some stupid just you know like some stupid like animals and there was one person came up an asian right with the do you know, like, i don't know if you've seen it on yours but do you know, like where they eat food but it's like they inhale it no and that's why i can't do it oh my god they don't even take, they don't even take a bite and then they'll swallow it uh and i was like yeah oh, no i didn't i didn't see that now i will like the like the the nsa is going to listen into this conversation and then it's going to be yeah. on the top for you page now so i definitely probably will see it <laughs> sorry about that i don't know why yeah, you'll definitely you'll definitely get it on your for you page and stuff like that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How was COVID for you? Um, rough. It was hard. Um, because before right before COVID, I, a lot of people had the same story. They had so much stuff lined up, and like so many cool things and cool opportunities about to happen that just kind of kind of vanished like they just disappeared they never came those opportunities and those things never came back and I was just so scared of my dad getting sick um yeah. because he's because that's just he's a huge priority of mine he's my best friend you know and um 
And we ended up never eat. Neither of us ever got COVID ever. Like to this day. Okay. <laughs> neither of us. I mean, he's he's not feeling too hot now, so maybe maybe he got it. But um, I we've never neither of us have ever ever gotten it. So that's a fear that was totally unnecessary. But it got to it took me to a really dark place because at the time I was before COVID, I was like moving, moving, moving. All this stuff was happening. I was never home. I was working a full-time job. I was working two, three nights a weekend, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I was staying at my boyfriend's house all the time. I was staying in hotels. Like I was never home. And I loved that. I loved traveling. I loved, and then that just kind of stopped. And then I had to be stuck with my own thoughts. And that took me to a really dark place. And um, yeah, I ended up, it, it was the best thing to ever happen to me, to be honest with you, but I ended up being hospitalized for like two weeks um, at a at a behavioral health facility. And I learned so much about myself and I had to confront things that I was avoiding for a really long time. And it just, uh, it really helped me be a better version of myself. And then yeah. when things started opening back up, um, it was... I was just ready to go. I was so excited, but I also was stronger and I had more insight as to what I, who I am, what my triggers are and how to just navigate the world in a much like, in a much softer way, I guess. Cause things yeah, are just right. like, it was just it all the time, all the time now. Oh my God. I hate, I don't hate bees, but they do scare me. Yeah. I'm just listening to what you were saying and then uh, a bee just like came in front of me so i'm like <laughs> trying to get over it. Over it. so i noticed uh i also the reason why i'm because i was a fan of you you know from watching your videos not just obviously with fonda rose but other little videos that from your time in ring of honor and independence circuit in america and i stumbled across you because i it's very hard for podcast people to know what wrestlers actually do interviews or those on podcasts and stuff like that i found you through the grapple theory i think you did one in may not may uh, january or february his glasses big beard yeah yeah I yeah remember. and nice guy everything yeah. his, content, his content's good and some people he's had on there unbelievable and when i watched yours with him because I was at work and I just watched the full one hour and you mentioned about COVID that's why I asked you now and you were telling me a little bit more and then you told me about mental health you spoke about mental health and stuff like that you are you are very I think a big advocate for that Definitely. As, in, yeah. as in people don't know what goes on behind closed doors with people mm -mm. and how things can affect people words hurt and as someone who got bullied as a kid, I know where you come from with COVID because COVID was a very dark time for everyone. Yeah. And I think you're an inspiration to many people with what you've just said. And from the video I watched and speaking to you now, the conversation, I've had conversations with people and interviews and conversation doesn't flow as quick as what it is now. And, mm -hmm. you know, but it's, it's falling quick. But yeah, I think you're a very big inspiration and advocate for mental health is quite it's quite good Thanks. you did Thanks. a 5k sorry go ahead no no go ahead you did a 5k run or for charity recently mm -hmm. yeah yeah that was our last weekend it was, uh, was that? hard <laughs> oh, i didn't i yeah. didn't train for it at all i just was like let's do it <laughs> yeah um i I didn't run the whole thing. I, there was a, there was a nice brisk walk that happened, sort of yeah. in the middle of it. But do the do the little move walk. And yeah, stuff it's like the little like the, when you see old people doing like their speed walking in the morning. It was kind of like that. But uh, yeah, it was. I mean, I was happy that that we did it. I, I hate waking up early in the morning, but we had to do it, and I was uh, I was happy to. It was for a good cause. I, I yeah. met um so this 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 in the area. This is where my boyfriend grew up. Um, his cousins best friend um he committed suicide and um this run and whole thing is for was like in in memory of him but also in memory of everybody who's who's lost their lives to, to to mental health issues and stuff so um i met them i met his mom and she was just super thankful and very sweet and it, it broke my heart but it also it also put it back together because everybody was rallying 
yeah. for her and for people who struggle with mental health. And that was like a really beautiful thing. So, yeah, that's uh, I think that was a nice thing what you've done. And obviously, me and the parents, that's quite touching and probably touched home for you as well. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Mental health. What does mental health mean to you? If someone says mental health, how would you describe it or how would you talk about you don't I Sorry. think that, that everybody everybody should get the opportunity to get mental health counseling, whether or not they are diagnosed with anything, whether or not they um they have struggled with things. Um, it's always good to navigate those things with a professional. Um and, and I don't think that it just boils down to somebody that has, you know, episodes or has like very obvious mental health issues. I think everybody needs to take that time to to Speak decompress up. and to talk yeah. and, and to, you know, and to think about the things that have happened to them and how they navigate their life. Because I think there's just so many people out there that struggle and they don't think, oh, well, I'm not, you know, homeless or I'm not on drugs or I'm not, you know hurting any I'm not hurting myself so I don't I don't have it I don't have issues but that's not true you know everybody has their everybody has their thing and I think it's always important to to talk it through with someone that can really help you and I think I, I really wish that mental health um resources were more accessible um and then to the people that do have very obvious mental health issues that have to take medication um just stick with it it's I like right now I'm on I'm on medication and I feel probably the most stable I have felt in a very long time. And I'm thinking, and it gets you in a weird place where you're like, oh, maybe I don't have issues. Maybe I don't have problems. Maybe I can get off this. Maybe I can, you know, take a break and just see what happens. But like, that is like so dangerous. <laughs> you should not do yeah. that. Um, so that's kind of a, even, even I still have those thoughts where I'm like, maybe I don't, maybe I'm like stable and I don't need to, but that's why I'm stable. I'm stable yeah. because I'm, medicated so it's one of them as well people don't know what happens or people's thoughts behind closed doors it's like i'm speaking to you now i don't know you from a bar of soap or anything but yeah. you know what i mean off camera you might struggle and i might struggle but it's you what you've just said because like mental health and medication that you're on and stuff and it takes a lot to for someone to talk about that and um i i i I think it's so funny when people say that to me because it's just like it's just a part of my everyday life it's like brushing my teeth you know um I get what you're yeah so i don't mind i don't mind talking about it it just i i like talking about it because it kind of normalizes it and i think that's a good thing yeah i see i see what you mean and where you're coming from with that and i think obviously with mental health people should speak out a lot more from what you've just said speaking out and seeking help and there's, there's so much support network around people people need to utilize it a lot more i think for sure for sure like i said good advocate for mental health <laughs> inspiration to many and I, just, I just want people to know that it's okay to not be okay that's good good quote to be honest as well <laughs> how will, would you say sorry who is your mount rushmore of professional wrestling oh my god that's a hard uh, question um shit i have this instinct right that you're gonna say jeff hardy i don't know why what? why would i say that no actually he, he wouldn't be on my on my mount rushmore i like him but i don't think um, I'm gonna say because I love Ricky Steamboat. I'm just gonna say him. Um, and I think he's very underrated. Um, Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, so I know. Uh, how many brought? How many people were on my Four. 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 I should know this. <laughs> yeah, you should. Um, yikes. So, um, I said Ricky Steamboat, Eddie Guerrero. Um, what girl? What what woman would I put there? What woman would have honestly for women probably charlotte flair okay. she's like i think she's like she's, <laughs> I, I think she's underratedly overrated overratedly underrated like because people are like oh charlotte flair blah, you know, but she's incredible she's better than her dad and her dad's rick flair <laughs> like, 
She's wrestled more than he has on WWE. Like that's a that's true. It's a fact. So I'm, I'm gonna put Charlotte Flair there, and our truth because I like he's really funny. <laughs> He's still funny. He cracks me up every time. Oh my he's god! Off. He like I lose my mind whenever he's on screen. He's so funny, and like to me, that's just that makes wrestling so good. Yeah, I mean, our truth. He's been around for, and you know what? He's not aged, does he? No, he looks exactly the same. I was watching like some old TNA stuff with him, and I was like, "This is from like twenty years ago. What's going on?" That was from when I was born, like twenty four years ago. Yeah, crazy. And I was like. God, he's he's it's like whatever moisturizer he's using or whatever. Give it's it me. Crazy. It's great. He's just he's he looks great and he moves just as well too. Yeah, he's the fact that he's still with WWE and everything and performing. I think he's what 54, 55, or I could yeah. be wrong. But like still, even Billy Gunn, he's 16, he's looking good. He is he is so freaking tall, and so are his kids. It's like crazy. I met them at a convention once and I was like, hi. Like, it was nuts. <laughs> yeah, I was with Baron Corbin, I think, six years ago, mm-hmm. seven years ago, and he he's tall. Baron Corbin yeah. is very tall. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? An inspirational message. If you could give an inspirational message, what would it be? <laughs> Let me think. Um, so, less than four years ago, I was eating sleep for dinner. No money for anything. And now I'm sitting in the house that I bought. I bought this house. Um, and in, a, in an era of society where it's hard to do that. Um, I'm not a college graduate. I just a just a work. I've been working since I was 16, 14, 16 to 14 years old. One of those things. If I can do all of this with the resources that I had, which were very little, anybody can. Anybody can make it happen for them if they find the thing that makes their heart happy. It makes their heart sing. Um, you can translate that into something really successful and something really beautiful for yourself so it's like if if i can do it anybody can um it's scary but it's so worth it and you learn so much about yourself about others about the world and it's you just got to do it you just got to find that thing that makes your that, that makes your heart go <laughs> that was super inspirational but that was just kind of like my my take on the world and experience See what I mean? so there's this something what i feel the first person that i want to start it with it's going to be called like 60 seconds so i'll say two things or i'll say something and we can do 60 60 seconds or two minutes or we'll just go see how long okay. and then so it's like i'll say two things or two people or a sentence and you say the first thing what comes up or whoever it is okay Jason Voorhees or Chucky? Chucky. Favorite vacation that you've been on? When I was in London, when I was 16. London, big up the UK. <laughs> Loved it. Favorite meal of the day, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or whatever you call it? Um, Dinner. Favorite food? Uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, the cereal. Straight up. Um, Favorite place you visited in the USA? Um, I freaking I hate this place. Um, Colorado is really beautiful, and I didn't even visit. I just drove through it. But it's really beautiful. AEW or WWE? What? I AEW because I have so many friends there. I have like genuine like people that I love and know that work there. So AEW. Yeah. What's your favorite year from when you was a little? Like from the so, however old you are, what was your favorite year of being alive? Two thousand seven was really fun. That's really when I discovered who, like, that's when I started really discovering myself. Okay, plans for twenty twenty four. Uh, getting weird, having fun, staying busy. <laughs> favorite alcoholic drink? I don't drink. Oh, fair enough. Water but, then. <laughs> but 
I, I I liked vodka. I liked um vodka water with like a spritz of um. I used to carry like a um a crystal light thing. It was like a little um like flavor enhancer, water flavor enhancer. So I'd have like a vodka water, and then I would put the flavor enhancer in there, and it was no calories, and it get, it got you really messed up. But I don't I don't drink anymore, so I don't. <laughs> yeah. Day or night. Night. Summer or winter. Summer. Soccer or rugby? Soccer or rugby? I've never or watched football. rugby, so, so so soccer. Soccer is good. Fair enough. Soccer. I've been, I've been to soccer matches, so I, I like. I always have fun. Yeah. Which ones you been to? Uh, the Red Bulls, the New York Red Bulls. Okay. I don't know who they played, and I I also went to the Philadelphia Union game. I went to one of those. Let's have a look at the Zoom questions here that we can ask. If you could afford a car, which one would it be? I really want to. I really want an Acura, like an Acura, like something a really nice Acura. I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not a fancy gal. I like just nice things. I like nice simple things. So probably an Acura. What's the one thing you regret spending money on? All of this crap here. <laughs> All of this bull crap that I don't use. <laughs> wow. What is one of your nicknames? Uh, my brother calls me Gabber Doodles. Uh, you could, uh... Have you ever written a song for someone? Yes. You mentioned that you're a singer. Yeah, I wrote a couple songs for my first boyfriend. His name, um, his name doesn't matter. But yeah, I wrote a song and performed it a couple times in Philly, and we never got to record it, but it was called Fingers, and I still have the lyrics on my phone. Okay. Have you got a guitar? Mm -hmm. I have two guitars. Wow. What is the last craft you made? Last craft? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it was necessarily craft, but I... I um. I did my boyfriend's wrestling trunks. I put his name on the back. So I did it with like a like a cricket and I sewed it on and that was kind of the last last big craft that I did was I made his trunks. What item is worth more spending more money on? What item is worth spending more money on? It's a good question. Um hair care, I'd say. Your hair yeah. just make making your hair really nice. Yeah. Who is your hero? My dad. Uh, what was your favorite subject at school? Um, civics, so like social studies and um, political science. Where did you grow up? Philadelphia. Puerto Rico or Cuba? Puerto Rico. Oh my god. <laughs> what is your favorite food? I think of us that one. You asked that one, yeah. Cinnamon toast. Favorite crumbs. animal? Cat. Oh, fair enough. Favorite month? Favorite month? October. What is your job title? A professional wrestler and content creator. Fair enough. <laughs> that'll wrap it up. I need to get better with that one. But that's the first time doing it. No, it was great. I, I love doing those kind of things. Yeah. Something new, you know, see if people like it. You also have this coming up. Yes, I do. Lisa Marie Varon, I think I said the name right. We'll mm -hmm. call her Victoria or Tower from <laughs> in here. Was she an inspiration to you growing up? Yeah, I, I love I She's an inspiration to me currently. I, I was on a <laughs> women's wrestling revolution show with her a couple years ago and i mean like you get nervous meeting people that you've yeah. literally watched on tv your almost your entire life and she was just like one of the girls like she was so nice so cool so to be involved in this match is like i mean i'm so excited because she she watched my my show on on apple tv and sent me a really nice message about it and i just it's like that she's that's crazy that like I get to be a part of something that honors her. I'm so very, very, very excited. Touch wood. You win. We'll see. Have you got anything 
plan for 2024 that you've not announced or you got coming up that you're excited about? Nah, nah I'm, I'm open about everything I got going on. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Any plans to come over to the pond? I, you know, that's like, I, I always say like, I don't have five-year plans. I kind of just let things happen. I kind of let things flow to me. I, I really got to figure out how to get over there. Honestly, I just kind of want to go to like party and like enjoy myself and maybe like, I, I, I said, I'm, I don't drink not because it's like a problem or like I'm an alcoholic or something and I'm in recovery or anything. I don't drink because like, I just don't want to. It's just, I, I, it never makes me feel good. It never, you know, I never end up having like a too good of a time when I drink. So I just stay away from it. Uh, but I would go to the UK and throw down at, in some pubs. I think I would have a good time. Um, but also I would like to go to wrestle, but I just kind of want to go back. I loved it there so much. I felt so, like it felt so good to be there. What's your top five favorite things of the UK that you like? Um, one of them I, I shouldn't like because the creator is not a good person. But Harry Potter is like a huge was like a huge deal for me for a very 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 long time. Um, I love Doctor Who. Um, was it Baby Reindeer that just came out? It's all TV shows. I'm sorry. <laughs> like TV shows and movies. Um. One thing you can't say, that's the weather. When I was there, I was there in August. It was hot. It was hot. Yeah, I mean, it, was not... it looked beautiful. Yeah. It rained only one day when I was there. And I was like, why is everybody talking about this place? It's always rainy. It was, it was beautiful. Um, I yeah. loved, there was like a cool little vintage shops I would go into. I loved Camden. Oh my God, Camden Town. It was amazing. Mm. Um, We got some good Thai food when we were there, which I was like, I was like, oh, that's interesting. It's a good Thai food here. Um, and I just love the people. You guys are really cool. I I, I really enjoy and like I I the 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 historic battle that's always been between the, the, the UK and United States is is always so funny to me because there's a lot of weird similarities uh about us that we don't ever really talk. Like it's hard to like it's hard to navigate what those things are and talk about what those things are but there are i felt like really like a really kindred spirit to people in the uk when i was there one thing about america and the uk is no matter like where you go in america you've got the accents it's same with the uk yeah yeah I, when i was um when i was in japan i was there with um with piper piper niven who is incredible tony storm and zaya brookside were my roommates met, met all of them they're amazing um they're such good girls and um i keep in touch with with piper like on twitter and stuff we talk we like go back and forth whatever um so i said uh american accent and i was like i have an american accent that's what i said and they were like oh my god you're the first person to ever say uh, that you also have an accent like because it is an accent it's different than your accent like we like america is not the standard of how to speak you know so they were just like, you you said it, the, the American accent, that said we've never heard that before. Like, yeah. Yeah, no matter where you go, it's the, the accents vary in the UK. You, the pronunciation of words. I love it. Some people don't. I love the way you guys talk. It's my favorite. And I wish I was, I wish I was from the UK. And I really do wish that I could um, talk like this all the time and nobody would think I was weird because I am from the UK, but I'm not. I'm American. <laughs> I, I'm a dirty American. Can you do any other accents? Uh, yeah, but the, my my British accent's the easiest one for me to like do like on the on the spot. Gingerbread man from Shrek. Was that? Gingerbread man from Shrek. Oh, I'm not gonna even try to do the muffin man. <laughs> <laughs> well you like it <laughs> anyway thank you for coming on and for having, me. having your time i really do appreciate it i'll get you on later on in the year thank yes. you thank you so much it's been an honor take care Bye.